Yep. Hey guys, welcome to my Dragons 2021 season review. Um, yeah, I don't really have much to say, let's just get straight into it. So, 8 wins, 77% completion rate, pretty much just shy of 200 meters more conceded as opposed to gained per game. 85 tries, 406 conceded. Uh, 16 tries scored from 6 against, 15 conceded, and then 203 offloads. So, the main thing I want to look at is the 106 tries conceded. And the reason I want to look at that specifically is because I don't have a graphic for it or anything, but I, you know, I did look it up. You'd be able to look it up and find it. They conceded, what was it, something like 14 or 15 more, you know, 14 or 15 more tries in the second half compared to their first. And that's really telling for me because that's sort of been the Dragons' MO for the past three to four years. Like, for the past three to four years, they have started not only se- not only just games, but their general season, like, fantastically. They've started fantastic, and then they just drop off. Like, no one knows why. You know, no one knows oh, Excuse me, what causes it. But yeah, for some reason, they just drop off. They do it, you know, every single game, pretty much. They do it during the season, you know, like, this season, what was, I think they started off 5-1 and one at the start of the season, and then, you know, they finished 12th, 11th, <laughs> you know, like, they do it every, you know, for the past four or five years at least, they've done it every season, and it just doesn't make sense, because they have a good squad, or at least, you know, they had a good squad, you know, because obviously some people have left, but, you know, you know, they have a good squad, they got a decent coach at least, in my opinion, a decent coach, like, so it just doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Like, the only thing I can think of is just that um, the players don't care. But even then, I don't think that's the case because a lot of the players, you can see, they care. They put in the effort and they try. But, yeah, I really don't know what it is because they have, you know, they have good structures in play. Like, you can see it when they're playing. They, you know, they set up good plays. They run good lines. Just, yeah, the second half of games and then, you know, like, just... The second half of the season, they just collapse, like, for some reason. Like, it's just sort of their MO at this point. Like, you know, <laughs> I, re- I really don't know what the cause of it is. I really couldn't tell you. Obviously, this season was a little bit different because they had some off-field issues. But still, like, even without those off-field issues, it's been happening for the past three, four years, you know? Like, so there's clearly something going on at the Dragons that causes it. I don't know what it is. But, you know, it's, it's something, like, and it's something they really have to sort out because otherwise they're just going to keep finishing in the bottom eight. Right, but, yeah, like, because, you know, you look at the stats and, you know, obviously, you know, tries conceded, they've, you know, they've conceded more than they've scored. But, you know, it's not by a lot. I'm pretty sure the Knights, I could be wrong on this, I'm pretty sure the Knights conceded more tries than they scored and they made the top eight. You know, so it's not impossible to concede more tries than you score but still make the top eight, you know, if you... You know, if you perform well, but I don't know, yeah, just for some reason, the Dragons just, they don't have a second half in them, for some reason. I don't know what it is, they just don't have it. I don't know if it's their, um, I don't know if it's just their spine doesn't understand how to game manage, I just don't know if they're set up properly to game manage, and I just, you know, I really don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, so we'll talk about a few individuals. Uh, firstly, the coach, Anthony Griffin. Uh, decent coach, in my eyes, I think he is a good fit for the Dragons, because he's a, um... He's a bit of a team builder in a sense that he um he's good at bleeding in youngsters and then also turning them into first graders. He may not turn them into superstars, but he can turn them into first graders. So if you know, so if Anthony Griffin, like, you know, so for example, they bled in a few youngsters like I can't think of his name, like Sloan, I think his name is. There's a few others I can't think of off the top of my head, but you know, he bled them in this se- you know, this season, give, gave them a bit of experience, and you know, they performed well. So yeah, under Anthony Griffin, I think he can build them into, you know, well-rounded first graders, but I think that's where it'll stop. I think if they really want to, like, reach the peak of, like, top four-esque levels sort of thing, then they'd probably need to get a either a better coach or they would need to just recruit a lot better. Like, you know, it's all well and good bleeding through youngsters, but at the end of the day... You know, to make the top four and to play semi-final football and stuff like that, you need superstars. You know, 
it's not about having youngsters that you can bleed through into first graders. It's about you know needing those superstars that can like show up in those big moments. Which you know Anthony Griffin has shown he can coach, but yeah, like yeah, overall good coach can bleed in the youngsters that the Dragons have coming through. But I think he does need support if he is to get them to the um into the, at least the top four. Like, top eight, I think he could do on his own, but, you know, if they really want to push and be a real threat in the NRL and get top four sort of thing, then I think he'd need a bit of help. All right, next is Jack Bird. Um, I'm actually very happy for Jack Bird. Like, he's had a really rough career so far, you know, because of injuries and just, like, being dropped from teams and all this sort of stuff. So, to see him finally get, essentially, a full season under his belt and perform well... Like, that's, you know, that's really good for him. It's really awesome. Like, I thought, you know, there was a period this season where he was playing at such a level that I thought, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he was brought into the Origin camp. Maybe, you know, he wouldn't have started, like, not over Turbo or um, Latrell Mitchell, but, you know, he definitely could have been brought into the Origin squad as, like, as a backup in case something happened, you know? Like, that's the, that's the season he had, and that's the talent that he's always had. He's always had that talent. He's just been an injury-prone, unlucky fella, you know? So... Yeah, good to see, um, oh, excuse me, my nose is all over the place right now. Yeah, good to see him get a full season under his belt. And yeah, hopefully for his sake, he can build on it. Because, you know, when he's on, he's on. He's a fantastic player when he's on. So, you know, it'd be good to see more of it from him. Uh, next is Ben Hunt. I think Ben Hunt is probably one of the most underrated halves in the competition. And what I mean by that is, don't get me wrong, people know he's a good player. You know, obviously he plays Origin, right? So people know he's a good player. But I think ever since, what was it, the 2015 Grand Final where he dropped that bomb, you know, there's just, there's, been, there's been this stigma about Ben Hunt that he can't handle big games and he can't handle big game situations and all this sort of crap. I think that is stupid. I think he is a fantastic halfback. I think when it comes to big game situations, if I had a team, like, well, not if I had a team, but like, you know, if I was working with the Dragons and we had a big game situation that needed to sort of be dealt with, I would be confident in having Ben Hunt. Because, you know, the amount of times, not just in, not just for the Dragons, but in Origin as well, you know, the amount of times where he's just pulled a 40 20 out of nowhere to get his team on the front foot. You know, like he's played a really good pass or he's put in a really nice kick to get a set restart or to set up a trial, you know, just, you know, something like that, you know, like, like a lot of people think, oh, you know, that's just general stuff. All halfbacks, you, you know, should be able to do that. And it's like, yeah, you're right. All halfbacks should be able to know how to do it. But it's, there's a difference between should being able to do it and actually being able to do it. Right? And Ben Hunt can do it. You know, so yeah, I think. Ben Hunt is a fantastic halfback. I think, you know, like I said, I think there's just a stigma about him because of that 2015 mess up, right? That has ultimately sort of, um, in the eyes of the public at least, sort of derailed his career, you know? Like, yeah, like I said, no one thinks he's a big game player anymore. I think the opposite. I think he's a fantastic big game player, right? You know, he made a mistake. It happens. You know, like, you could look at, um, you know, JT, for example. You know, he, um, you know, there were times where he missed crucial, you know, conversions, you know, there were times where he would misplace a pass, you know, would you say he's not a big game player because he made, he made a couple of mistakes in big game moments? No, absolutely not. He was one of the best players of all time. Now, I'm not saying Ben Hunt's one of the best players of all time, but I'm just saying, you know, good players can still make mistakes, right? And, you know, even though Ben Hunt made that mistake, that doesn't stop him from being one of the best halves in the competition, in my opinion. Right? But yeah. Fantastic player, I think, you know, doesn't get the respect he deserves, doesn't get the credit he deserves for the work he does, for what he does. But yeah, fantastic player. Just, yeah, he just I think he needs to get a bit more respect. Uh, next is Zach Lomax. A fantastic young player. But I think he's being used poorly in the Dragons. Like... I think Zach Lomax is the sort of guy where you want to just get him the ball early and let him go. Like, there were so many times this season where you'd see it. Lomax would get the ball early. He'd take on his man one-on-one, -on -one, beat him, and then be able to get, like, sort of the flick pass off to, I think, his, I think Ravalawa. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I think Ravalawa was his winger. 
Like, you know, you saw it a good, you know, a good chunk of times where, you know, Lomax would take on his man, beat him, get the pass off to Ravalo, and they'd be down the sideline. You know what I mean? They may not have scored, but, you know, they'd be down the sideline and make a line break, right? But there were so many times this season where they just went the opposite way. Like, you're sitting there watching it, and you're like, you know, you have one of the most talented young fellas out on that edge, and you just go the opposite direction. Like, you just ignore him. And not only that, you've also got, I'm pretty sure it's Ravalo outside him. Like, you know, you've got one of the most devastating wingers in the competition outside him. Like, surely that should be the side you target and that should be the side you try to attack down, you know? But no, it just seems like, the, you know, the Dragons always would go the opposite direction for the most part and then the only time it would go to Lomax was when there was a kick. Right? Because they're like, oh yeah, he's good in the air, we'll just bomb it to him. You know, it's like, no, like, give the ball to Lomax early, let him work, you know, let him go. Uh, yeah, fantastic player. I think he just um, I think not only do he, does the Dragons need to structurally get him more involved, but I also think he needs to just like go look for the ball himself a bit more because he is that talented of a player that if he gets the ball in his hands, he can create something. All right, and lastly for the Dragons is Tarek Sims. Again, another player for the Dragons. I just don't think he gets the credit he deserves. Like, I think within the Dragons fan base, he gets the credit he deserves because obviously they watch him week in, week out. But I think just across the whole NRL, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. You know, you know like people look at him like, oh yeah, it's Tarek Sims. You know, he has a good moment or two in him, but other than that, he's you know he's average or something like. But you know, he's not. He's a fantastic player. You know, like like that try assist to Brian Toto in State of Origin, like. You know, for a second roller to throw that pass, like, what was it? Like, he was getting tackled, he's falling to the ground, and he still manages to throw a perfect, like, two-man cutout to his winger right on the winger's chest. Like, oh, you know, obviously he's tall, so he's a bit shorter to the ground, but, you know, that's not the point. You know, it was like, you know, it was straight to his chest, right? Like, that is a talent that some halves don't have when they're just running, you know, normally sort of just, like, straight at the defensive line. There are some halves that don't have that talent to throw that ball so accurately. And so, you know, so confidently, right? And Tarek Sims just sort of did it like, yeah, whatever, I can do this. I'm, you know, I'm fine. I'm pro. Right? Yeah, again, you know, another player that I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. And I think that's the case for a lot of Dragons players, not just Sims and McInnes and Hunt, like I said. I think a lot of the Dragons players don't get the credit they deserve for some of the things they do. Obviously, there are some that are a bit dodgy. <laughs> but overall, yeah, I think they don't get the credit they deserve. And I think that all comes back to what I talked about at the beginning, where they just... For some reason, they all just sort of drop off the face of the planet come the second half of the season and second half of games, you know? But yeah, Tarek seems phenomenal play. Excellent runner of the ball, excellent passer. You know, he creates opportunities for everyone around him. Yeah, fantastic player. And I think, they, I think they're I think they planning to get rid of him. Last time I read, they were planning to get rid of him. He's going to stay for 2022, I think. But then after that, they're going to ship him on. I think that's just stupid. Like, if I were the Dragons, I'd be giving him a contract, 100%. He's a fantastic player. But, you know, the Dragons, maybe they have some young fella coming up that's going to be 10 times the player as Tarek Sims. We don't know. You know, all you know I don't know. But, yeah, like, I think I think it's a bit crazy that they're just sort of letting him go without putting sort of any real fight into trying to keep him, you know. But, you know, it is what it is. And then, yeah, my overall thoughts on the season. Um, I predicted them to finish 11th. They got 11th, so I was actually quite happy with that when I saw that. You know, because it was, it was sort of another one under the belt for me to predict correctly. Um, yeah, like I said, they um, they started the season like a house on fire. Like, you know, they were incredible. Like, I, you know, I think it was 5-1 and one or 4-1. and one, And then within that 4-1 and one or 5-1, and one, they, you know, they beat the Sea Eagles. They beat the Eels. You know, like, all the sides were there. That, you know, they're going to perform well. And then just, they just drop off the face of the planet. I don't, you know, I don't know what it is. You know, I don't think it's the coaching because it's been a thing that's been happening for years because it happened under, um, what's his name, Mary. Right? You know, it's, it's been happening for years. So I don't think it's a coaching thing. I think it's just a player mentality thing. So, you know, if they can clear that up, then they're a top eight side in my opinion. Like, or at least they should, you know, they are competing for that top eight spot, you know. Right, and then just like final thing, Anthony Griffin, um, is he the man to take them forward into the future? Like I said before, I think he's good at bleeding in youngsters, but I think if they are going to be like a top four team and a serious contender for the competition, I think he needs help. Because I just I don't know how well he goes about handing like player egos and stuff like that. But yeah, like, you know, next season I think 
just because they have so many youngsters in their spine now next season, I think they will finish outside the top eight again. I think, you know, 10th, 11th will be their place again. Right? You know, maybe they surprise me. You know, maybe they don't. You know, maybe they do much, you know, maybe they do much worse. I don't think they would do worse. I do think there are going to be worse teams in the comp than Dragons next year. But, yeah, I think 10th to 11th again next year. But, you know, only time will tell. Right, but um, yeah, with that, guys, that's my Dragons season review. You know, like all these reviews, if there's anything you think I should add, anything you think I should move, please let me know. You know, any if you have any thoughts or opinions about the Dragons, you know, let me know as well. I'd love to talk about it with you. You know, I love, I just love, love talking footy. So, yeah, just leave any of your opinions, you know, down in the comments, son. Um, I'll try to reply to as many as I can, and you know, we can have a discussion about it. But um, yeah, with that said, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, take it easy. Have a good one.